So we're going to move on to the next step in the testing here. And they have us actually mount the Pi and do some quick tests. I'm using the power module that came with the Pi. It outputs 5 and a quarter volts at 2.4 amps. I've read that if you use just a regular 5 volt supply, the Pi isn't necessarily reliable. So, uh, in his instructions, he had to put some tape over the top of the uh, metal cans here on the connectors just to keep them shorting to the board. I've just gone ahead and put in the three standoffs, which will should keep the shorting from happening. So we'll mount the Pi. Standoffs seem a little bit tall, but I think we've got a good electrical connection. We're not going to short anything out here, moving stuff around. Uh, well, if I had a convenient roll of electrical tape, I'd actually use it. I don't have. I'm going to go ahead and put some tape under there anyhow. Just because I can. Now, I'll just try to slide it in there after the fact, because the board is still loose. Just add a bit more insulation. So the pie is mounted. We'll go ahead and apply power. I'll find the power jack. Yep. Sounds like little man is up. That's a... Uh, Nemo coughing. And the next thing we do is apply power and then be patient while the Pi boots and then Sim H boots. And this takes a, a few seconds, so be patient. Hopefully, this will come up here and work. Uh, okay, it's just seeming a little excessive. Well, there's still hard disk activity. Ah, there it is. Okay, this is what we expected. So all the LEDs have lit. So I've got all the LEDs in the right orientation. Short the upper two solder holes in the test switch footprint. I've got a couple little bent diode leads here. So the test switch is right here. Let me see if I can get a jumper in there. And I've got it in there, and we did see the LEDs come off. That's the lamp test switch. We do know that makes most of these will go off. Check number two, and you have blinking lights, and we do have blinking lights. Leave the test pin shorted and see if the enable halt switch works. Short the top two pins of enable halt. Oh, I just spilled dead solder residue everywhere. That's these two pins. And the system halted. I don't have a terminal hooked up. I don't see the SimH prompt because I don't have the terminal hooked up. Short the top two pins of the continue switch and it should pick up and run again. And it did. Turn the rotary encoders and make sure they sequence through the LEDs. This one does. And this one does. And of course, we're looking at various things here. So depending on which one of these LEDs is lit affects what we're seeing displayed. You know, down here. So, and without the front panel on, to remember what's what. But again, these are con these rotor switches are controlling what is being displayed on the front of the machine. So why do this? Because if there's something wrong and having that big bank of heavy switches on there it would make it much harder to debug. But by golly, our build is good so far. Uh, not bad, pretty happy with that. So the lamp test, there's a switch that goes in here for lamp test, the white one was really common on these old machines because you were typically using incandescent bulbs. 
and the bulb's burned out. If you wondered if a bulb was burned out, you'd of course hit lamp test and replace the bad bulb. Uh, so right now it's in lamp test mode. All the lamps are good. That's faithful to the original hardware. We can short those and actually see the blinking lights doing their thing. And I believe that was the I think that was the power up. Uh, if I remember right, which row was address and which row was data? Boy, it's been a long time. Is there a picture here that captures that and the sea of paper I've got? I don't, but uh, as you can see, we have, you know, the core system up and running. There was four videos in the previous series about getting the Pi set up where we installed the software and got that all ready to go on the Pi before we built the kit, so we know the Pi was good and running. Uh, this is looking good. I like the intensity on the LEDs. They're not super bright. You know, not like they're super high intensity. We're not super dim. Uh, blinky lights. You haven't programmed until you've actually used the front panel on the machine to halt the machine, look at the data register, step through the machine, look at the processor registers, and single step through the machine and use the LEDs to be debug something. I don't think you've really programmed until you've had that experience. Uh, in this era, working at this level got you right down in the heart of the machine. You're looking at the data bus, the address bus, the registers, machine status, uh, and directly manipulating memory and registers from a front panel to control the machine. Uh, you know, those days in many ways are long gone. Uh, there's lots of really great debuggers and Windows and, and Linux, etc. But in my opinion, this era was pure. You were, it was your only abstraction from the hardware was really the electronics between the lamps, the switches, and the actual hardware. Uh, you were as close to it as you could get uh, to control it. Uh, and typically in the early days, you'd start the machine up. Uh, there was often a piece of paper taped to the front that had the IPL code on it. You'd toggle in that initial program. It might be 10 or 15 instructions. That would be enough instructions. Set the address, put all those instructions in the machine, set the address back to zero and execute it. And that was enough instructions to get the machine to go out and talk to, say, a paper tape reader and reading a bootloader from paper tape and that bootloader would be a more complex program you get that into memory you would start that running and that bootloader would be smart enough to go out to some kind of a mass storage device like a disk drive and then pull the system in off that disk drive so you know it's a, a multi-step process uh, machines like this and this error didn't have ROM in them there was no BIOS uh, you woke the machine up at the hardware level and then you deposited into memory the commands you needed to, you know, to load your whatever you were going to run off of paper tape or you know, in the later generations hard drive or punch cards or whatever. So no BIOS, no ROM. Uh, on the positive side of that, the oldest machines used core memory and core memory is non-volatile so you get your operating system loaded and it would be in core memory and you'd halt the machine and just turn the power off and that program is still sitting there in the core memory and you could turn the machine on uh, restart it and restart the OS you didn't have to load it every time because the core memory being magnetic and non-volatile kept your operating system uh, you know stored in the core memory uh, of course if you corrupted the operating system because you did something dumb programming you went back to the initial load process and ran again well, I'm pretty happy watching this run here. 
it's acting exactly like I'd expect it to. We can go back to the lamp test mode. We can put the lamp, lamp test jumper back in. And we can see it doing blinky light stuff. Very sweet. Uh, I guess I'll wrap this segment up here. In a future segment, we'll tackle getting all the toggle switches in. That looks like it's going to have some challenges. It should be really interesting. Uh, getting those square and straight and true and aligned. Uh, I've, I've seen some pictures of really good builds. Uh, looking forward to it. It should be interesting. The uh, fact that it comes with this little snappable template to go under the switches and on top of the switches to kind of align the bodies of the switches all together. For soldering, kind of, again, a great uh, kit design choice here. You know, the alignment panel for the LEDs and a couple of alignment panels for the switches. That's just a great attention to detail I believe, by the designer of the kit. Uh, and I'm sure that evolved through his frustration. You know, putting this stuff up together. Uh, I'm just looking at the labeling on this. It actually says toggle red, toggle purple, 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 red, 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 purple, purple, purple. So it's actually labeled here with push up. Uh, there's the white one, which is the lamp test. Uh, push on momentary red. Or push down momentary red, push down momentary purple, push up. So the, the, the orientation of the switches is going to matter here, whether, you know, for a uh, lamp test, you're going to push the switch up to test the lamps and pull it down not to. But some of the switches along here are either going to be pushed down or maybe they're all, and there's a push up here in the middle. So it's a momentary contact red and, and you're in the orientation to push up to actually have it do something. So, uh, a little bit of attention to detail to get the orientation of the switches in right, get the right colors in the right places. Anyhow, we'll tackle that in a future video. I've droned on long enough. Uh, hope, you didn't, hope you've enjoyed this so far, and we'll talk soon.